Okay, we're continuing the Money Button documentation series, and right now we're talking about keys, private keys, public keys, and addresses, and this video is about addresses. And we just talked about private keys and public keys. There are three different videos because they have sort of, sort of three different sort of uh, concepts, uh, but they're very linked, and so each video will link to the other ones and the documentation we have about this other stuff. So uh, in a nutshell, an address is the... Uh, hash of a public key and a public key is uh, a private key times G. So an address is actually the, I think it's the ripe MD160 hash of the SHA-256 hash of the public key. Um, so I'm just gonna, as usual, dive right into my terminal here and start showing you guys what this is like. So oh, here we are, Node.js, load the library BSV. Now, just like last time, I'm going to start by just generating a private key. So we have one available for us. So bsv.privatekey.from random, generate a new random private key. Now I'm going to generate my corresponding public key equals bsv.publickey.from private key, private key. Uh, my private key looks like this. People that watch the other ones, you should confirm that this should be a different pr uh, private key than the other one. Um, and here's what my public key looks like. Now, I'm going to generate an address. So var address equals bsv.address that from public key, public key address that two string. Now, for people who've already seen stuff like this, whoops, address 1s, addresses basically always start with a one, with a couple of exceptions that we can talk about uh, uh, shortly. But basically addresses always start with a one. That's because the address itself, I think we have some methods here that'll show some of this stuff here. Let's see if I have a two object method. Um, we have different types of addresses and if you have a mainnet address that is pub key hash, which is basically a normal address, there is actually a, a, a buffer that gets prefixed, which is, which is this thing right here. This ends up getting converted into a buffer. It's prefixed with a number. And when it is base 58 check encoded, it just so happens it always starts with a one. So under normal conditions, you always have a one here. Um, now we can do things like, let's suppose as usual, I want to do something like read in an address. So what I can do is I'll call my new address, address number two, and then I can do bsv.address from string, address that two string. And I get back the same address. Now, like many of the other methods here, basically if I were to pass in an invalid uh, address, it doesn't work. So there's no way to, basically, if, if somebody gives you an invalid address, uh, it will throw an exception. And so you can check for that and know that if they've given you an address, it is certainly a valid address that at least it hasn't been mistyped or something like that. And so that way, that's how you check for things like making sure somebody doesn't lose money or something like that. Um, now, one other weird concept with addresses that's, well, okay, so two things. So first of all, we, we know with public keys that public keys can be either compressed or uncompressed. Now, again, you don't normally have to worry about this because they're almost always compressed, except that if, if it shows up, you're going to be very confused if you don't already know what this means. So let's just make a new public key, uh, which is going to be the same as the other one. We'll call it the public key dot, is it? so bsv dot public key dot from point and it'll be the first public key dot point. And then instead of being compressed, this one's not going to be compressed. And so public key one looks like that. Public key two looks like this. Okay, good. So now I've got a new uncompressed public key. Now I should be able to make a new address here. Now this is the same public key, it's just formatted differently. So the private key is actually the exact same. Right? I didn't generate a new private key. The private key is the same one. It's just a differently formatted uh, pub, uh, public key. So now if I generate an address from the from public key from the compressed form to 
Okay, public key, capital K. And I look at my first address and my second address. Uh, the, the true, this means here. Address true. Address two. Okay, we get a different looking address there. So that's because the, the value is being hashed and so you get a different address. So that's why it matters. Like you'd be, if you ever encountered these and you didn't know about this, you'd be very confused if you ended up with a different address than what you're expecting. Now, if this ever happened for some reason, like somebody gives you an uncompressed address, you don't know what's going on, somehow you end up with a compressed version, your money is still recoverable. It just has a different address. The private key is still the exact same. So, so long as you have the private key, you can still recover your money. And it just helps to understand something about this. So from an end user perspective, this should never occur. Like the user would never notice this. And as we're talking about in building stuff with money button, um, hopefully we can just completely eliminate addresses altogether from the user experience. And this is something that only developers will ever have to know about or care about. Uh, but for now, users are still copying and pasting addresses. So, so that's just how it is for now. Um, okay, so that's, go ahead. No, it's just a question. Uh, you you uh, are able to know that this is a mainnet uh, address looking like you can inspect the address and know that it has a one, so it's a mainnet address. There is any way to know if it's a compressed or not compressed uh, address? Just looking at the address. No, not right. no, there's not because cool. it's just the hash and there's no way to know what was hashed. So you have no idea unless, unless you sense. also know what the public key is. Makes sense. Cool. Um, okay. Is there any kind of, oh, sorry, is there any kind of limitation of the number of address that the public key can generate? Uh, so there's no, well, well, okay. Let me say that differently. There are exactly two addresses for each public key. There's the compressed form and the uncompressed form. So, and again, normally, like basically the way every wallet actually works today is they all generate compressed public keys. And therefore the address is you're only gonna see one of them in practice, unless something weird is going on. You're analyzing the history of the blockchain or something like that. And you see these old uh, style addresses, uh, that would be the only case to come up. But, but that's the limitation. So there are exactly two different ways to create an address from a public key. Cool. Okay, now there's one other weird thing. So this is just, so there's another issue in Bitcoin that uh, is in the, in the Bitcoin SV world is relevant. So there's something called P2SH. I'll just write this out here first so that people know what I'm talking about. P2SH or pay to script hash, which is a different way to create an address that is now deprecated in Bitcoin SV for good reason. Uh, I, I don't want to explain everything right now, but basically if you try to actually use P2SH and you're writing smart contracts, it doesn't help, it makes things harder. So the perspective of an application developer is P2SH is somewhat annoying. So it's being deprecated, but you do, like people do actually use stuff like this today. Like basically the only way you can do multi-sig in practice today is to use a P2SH address. And they haven't yet opened up non-standard outputs yet. So you actually, if you want to do multi-sig, you actually have to use P P2SH right now. So it helps to know what is P2SH. I'm gonna have to generate a script, which we haven't done yet, and we'll have probably multiple videos on what is script later. But for now, you just have to just, just acknowledge that what I'm doing is creating a script. And this is a, the world's simplest script. You wouldn't ever do this in, in reality, but this is just, the world's simplest script is just op return, which if you actually execute this would immediately invalidate the transaction. So it's just an example of a super simple script. Now I can do, uh, I can make a new address, call this one address three, equals again, if I remember the, the, this correctly here, but I think it's something like K2, uh, yeah, K ying two, there you go, I can tab. Uh, the script address three dot two string. Now I've got a different style address that starts with a three instead of a one. So whenever you see that, that is a P2SH address, pay to script hash. You'll only see this right now if it's multi-sig. So I'm not going to show it because I don't think I could do this from memory. But basically, if you were to make a, uh, a multi-sig script, it would have other stuff in here like check multi-sig, okay? Or it's, I think it's object, yeah, I, think it, I think it's all object multi-sig and some other stuff in there. 
and you would have a totally different script and you would generate an address that would look like this. Uh, it starts with a three. So that's what is P2SH. Um, in practice, hopefully most people will not have to deal with this. Uh, hopefully we'll have the non-standard outputs enabled soon and people won't ever have to do P2SH again. But in any case, for right now, you, you just do need to be aware of that. Um, okay, whoops, I didn't mean to kill everything there, but any, uh, anything, uh, anything I missed, guys, I can move on to the, the code and the, and the documentation or any other comments? No, I do. They're fine. Let's go do. Yeah, I think we're set. Okay, okay, let me move on to the code then and just glance at the code and then look at our documentation. So this is <clears throat> the code for address.js in BSV, the library, and as usual, there's sort of a bunch of extra code in here, some of which is, is sort of just mostly irrelevant from the point of view of an application developer. And really what you're gonna be doing in practice is things like from public key, um, that's how you generate an address from a public key. You'll probably do things like from string, which is basically how you import an address from a string. And then you'll probably use to string, which is how you output an object uh, to a string but there's so many uses of it, there. there we go. And it is a base 58 check string. So that's why it looks like base 58 characters is that we're using base 58 check again. So that's what makes it so that you can't basically accidentally type it in wrong or something like that or throw an error. Um, and that's basically it, although I'll add one comment here if I can find, you can see these properties like the network and the type so type is basically either pub key hash or P2SH. So it's either a normal one or a P2SH one. Network is either mainnet or testnet. And then the hash buffer is just the hash of the public key. So that's what those values are inside of an address. Um, all right, I'm gonna move on to the documentation so that people can see that real quickly. Okay, so in here we have uh, all this stuff written up and you can basically see the same type of information about how to generate private keys, how to get the public key from a private key and how to get an address from that and how to sort of print them and view them and then import them again, uh, which is what you would do if you're like sharing an address or something like that, as well as a bit of a, a explanation of P2SH and the difference between testnet and mainnet as well. So for instance, a testnet address will start with either an N or an M rather than with a one. So they just start with a different variable and you can always, or a different uh, character and you can always distinguish them. Um, okay, so that, that's, uh, that's all I have. Did I forget anything? Any other comments or questions, guys? Just a question. Uh, I, I know that on the, on the early days of Bitcoin, there was also pay to public key without, without the hash. That's still a, a valid, a valid script. Like you can, you can, you, you can use, a, you can create a script that pays to a public key, and that is valid in this moment. Basically, it's a good question. I'm actually not sure what currently constitutes a standard transaction. I will say that at one point in Bitcoin's history, there were something like five or so different standard scripts. Okay. So I'll just say, so very, very originally, there was no notion of a standard script and you could just program mm -hmm. anything in script. And this terrified basically the Bitcoin core developers and they ended up adding in this notion of a standard script, which means your output can only be one of five different script types. Or I think it might've even been four or something like that originally. And so that included pub key, which just means instead of paying to an address, you pay directly to a public key. It included pub key hash, which means paying to the hash of a public key, or that is say paying to an address. It included multisig, which is paying to basically a list of public keys. And it included P2SH, which is paying to the hash of a script, which could be a multisig script, which is how people are actually using P2SH today. And then finally, it also included op return. And so I'm not sure what it currently is, it might be the same thing. If it is, that means you actually could do normal multi-sig in an output, although I've never seen that actually happen. Um, the way everyone does multi-sig currently is with P2SH. And it's basically impossible to do anything other than that because what a standard script is, is it can be mined if it's not standard, but it's not relayed. And the miners will actually ignore it by default. 
So they'll, if a miner puts it in a block, it's a valid block, but none of them mine these things yet. So unfortunately, uh -huh. we're really limited in what we can do right now. You basically, basically the only advanced thing you can do right now in practice is op return. So you can do these large op returns now on Bitcoin SV, which basically means putting data in there, but you can't do complicated scripts yet. But this is a part of the plan. So hopefully, hopefully soon, the user won't even know it's an address. So what'll, what'll be going on under the hood is the software is managing the contracts or the scripts and the user is just swiping money button and money is being transferred and they have no idea how it's working under the hood, but it'll actually be arbitrarily complicated scripts in the future. And so that is happening right now, uh, cool. but there's just a lot of work that they have to do to, you know, who knows, that's, uh, that's on the node developers to figure that out, but uh, that right. is happening. Awesome. Okay, uh, so uh, that's all I have. Uh, so please visit moneybutton.com. You can view links to all of our documentation and, and help and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to see the documentation specifically, that's at docs.moneybutton.com. We have a Telegram group, t.me slash moneybuttonhelp, where uh, you can talk with us, get help for Money Button, uh, if you're building an application or something like that, or if you just need help with... with uh, with using the button or something like that, or if you need help with this library, uh, you can talk with us in our Telegram group, t.me slash money button help. And um, we'll be linking to all of these videos in a group because they're related. So public keys, private keys, addresses. And then the next videos are probably going to be BIP32 or extended private keys and extended public keys, which are actually what most wallets are using uh, in practice today. Um, all right, that's it. Anything else guys? No, I would do. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I see what's up. Uh, don't forget that we are going to post something in our blog. Yes. Oh, that's true. I did forget something, which is we're going to post this stuff to our blog. So we'll have uh, probably a number of different blog posts where we include this stuff. So these will be in a blog post about keys, and we'll have a, a few different blog posts containing all of these uh, these articles. So that's at blog.moneybutton.com. So please view our blog. And we have other wonderful articles on there as well. Hmm. All right.